Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, welcome to my channel if you are new here. I am Martina Lilly and today we are going to do, I guess, a little bit of a get ready with me. I'm going to play with some, well, like two new makeup products or just like newer makeup products in general that I want to show some more love on my channel. And I'm going to, as I go and do my makeup application, I'm going to show you guys like my current favorite makeup brushes and how I use them and why they're my favorite. So it's probably going to be a long one, grab a snack and a drink and chill out. And I'm probably going to be chatty and all that in it. So if you don't like those kind of videos, it might not be for you, but hopefully that sounds interesting. And we have a good old fashioned makeup time before we get into it, do the YouTube things like subscribe, hit that notification bell and let's get started. I'm actually going to take my Dior lip oil, Dior lip glow oil in cherry oil, the shade one, I think I am so late to the party on this. I've wanted one for ages and just, I don't know. I just never picked one up, but I recently picked up the Clarins lip oil and I really enjoyed it. And I was like, I wonder how much it differs to the Dior because they're kind of both of those brands lip oils I've seen really hyped up. So I'm testing them for a this or that video. So far I do enjoy both, if you're wondering. All right, let's start with the eyes like normal. I'm gonna prime with my NARS Smudge Proof Eye Primer. Everything will be linked down below in the description box that I'm using. And if you shop through my links, they are affiliate links. Thank you so much if you use them. So I'm just going to pop some on my NARS on. I do often get asked, like if, you're, if you've seen some of my videos, you usually see me use either the NARS Eye Primer or the Rare Beauty Eye Primer. And I do normally get asked like which one I prefer. I think if you have oily lids, you'll like the NARS better. And if you have dry lids, you'll like the Rare Beauty better. But I like both, but I do prefer, like the Rare Beauty is my favorite, if you're wondering. It's really, really nice. Just a little bit more hydrating than the NARS, but they're both good. So when it comes to eyeshadow brushes, my favorite eyeshadow brushes are natural hair brushes, personally. I just have found the way that they blend my eyeshadow out is really quite a game changer, but that doesn't mean that I don't have vegan eyeshadow brushes that I don't think are as good and as stunning. So I'm gonna give you the two kind of options. My favorite brushes are hands down like the Refer brushes. Um, they're linked always in my description box down below for you guys. I just think Refer has the best brushes in terms of quality, but also shape. They really cater to, especially for someone like me who has hooded eyes, they really cater to that. I also really like the indie brand What's Up Beauty brushes. They're very, very similar to the Refer brushes, but these are like, I actually think they're kind of blending their original set is like with the refer brushes and the what's up beauty brushes it's like a really perfect pairing because these have slightly different shapes but are also equally as amazing for hooded eyes and they kind of like work really well in conjunction with each other i also have the bk beauty both eyeshadow sets i think i have all their eye brushes great vegan quality eyeshadow brushes. I do prefer the natural hair, but these are a really, really good quality. BK Beauty is one of the best brush brands I have ever tried. It's stunning. They're very soft, great shapes. I really like BK Beauty if you're looking for a vegan option. Lethal Cosmetics also recently released some eyeshadow brushes. They don't have too many and uh, they don't have any specifically for like hooded eyes. So I wouldn't say these are like hooded eye specific, you can still obviously use them, I do. Um, but I think these are the softest vegan brushes I've ever tried. They are so, so soft and these are really quite affordable. So I actually have been really liking the Lethal Cosmetics brushes as well, um, especially for that vegan. They're just the softest ones I've ever come across. So I do really like those. As well as the Delium Tools Golden Triangle set. Uh, these are also vegan and I've used these for years and years and years and years. I think I have three sets of their Golden Triangle brushes. They're really, really good quality. I really like them. They are a bit soft. They're probably, depending on the brush, they're probably my kind of third favorite vegan brush set but I do really, really like them. I think they're a solid, solid quality and probably don't get the hype they deserve. But the Refer brushes are hands down my number one favorite. And I especially love the Refer 33. You might've heard me talk about this before. Are you gonna focus? There we go. This is the Refer 33 and I love it. If you can literally do an entire eye look just with this one brush, it's great for any eye shape, I think. And it's just such a versatile brush. You can like pack shadow on with it. You can blend it, uh, you can turn it to like blend. You can squiggle to blend. You can use the pointed tip to do your under eye or the inner corner. You can use it for metallics. It's such a great one and done brush. I really, really like it. So I'm gonna start with my Refer 33 and just tap into a little bit of this shadow. This is the Pat McGrath Labs Velvet Liaisons um, Matte Palette or Eyeshadow Palette. I'm just gonna tap that just to set the lid a little bit. You don't have to do this, but 
Usually if there's a bone colored shadow, I will. I'm also going to dip into this middle shade with the same brush using the Refa 33. You do not have to use these palettes, by the way. You can just use any colors you have in your collection. I just, as you know, if you've been around here again, I really love the Velvet Liaison palette from Pat. And I'm just tucking this into the outer corner to begin with and see how like, you can really like, cause it's like slanted. I use the slant of the brush to like tap it onto the outer corner. And then I use like, I turn it straight, like horizontal and tuck it into where I want my like crease to start like my crease to be because I have hooded eyes I like my crease to be a little bit above where like the fold is and so if you are unsure where that crease should sit you can tilt your head back and where your I think it is this the orbital bone where that is you'll see it if you tilt your head back and that's where you can like blend your crease out and it will show hopefully that makes sense so I'm just going to Tuck this in here. The trick is to use very, 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 very soft touch. Like you don't want to go in, you don't want to hold your brush in like this because the closer you hold your brush down, the more pressure you're going to apply. You want to hold your brush back here and you want to use a feather light touch because the a good quality eyeshadow shouldn't really need a lot of like blending or, you know, pressure or anything to kind of blend out. It should just need a really soft touch. And the softer the touch, the less likely of skipping or like patchiness for the matte shadow that you're gonna get. This is a really nice point to actually mention that I am not a professional makeup artist in any way. I'm not pretending to be. This is just what works for me and my preferences. And if you vibe, you vibe. And if you don't, you don't, but that's cool. Okay. And then what I do is I turn it like this and I stick it into that crease and I like kind of wiggle it around like this and it just blends it out for me. And again, this might not be your preference kind of thing, and that's totally okay. This is just what I like. Another blending brush that I really like to start with for like my transition shade is also the Refa 27. I really like this one because it's a pointed or tapered blending brush. So it has like a tip here, which I like. I like blending brushes that have like a tip because you can put the color onto the tip and then the kind of lower down bristles are going to do the blending for you. I like that this isn't too big of a blending brush as well. So for me, this is a really good start, like ideal starting off brush. I'm just picking some of that up. Now you want to use less color as well and then build so that you, you can always add shadow. You can't take it off that kind of a thing. Um, so I'm just going to use this to fluff through the crease again as well. You can, have, you don't have to use both of these brushes. I just wanted to show them both. And then when you're blending side to side light motions like that are going to kind of bl blend the eyeshadow and move it across and then kind of squiggling or squir swirling, squig squirling, squiggling and swirling at the same time motions is going to blend the shadow upward. One of my next all-time favorite brushes, uh, especially from Refa, is the Refa 14. I have three of these in my collection. I should also mention I have three of the Refa 33s. That's how much I love them. This is just a very small tapered blending brush. And I love this because for my small hooded eyes, it's the perfect size to kind of do that deepening um, matte shade that I like, where it's not going to pack on too much shadow and be, and like blend too much. I want it to be a lot more strategically placed and blended. And this is just the perfect kind of shape for that. So I'm going to dip into the dark brown now. These aren't all of my favorite brushes that I'm just trying to show you guys like the absolute creme de la creme for me personally, in my opinion. So I'm going to start and I just like to, again, a very soft touch starting small and you can always build up with some dark brown. And I like to kind of deepen my outer corner quite a bit because I find that I have downturned hooded eyes and it just I just find that it lifts them up a little bit. 
and then I like to kind of deepen and squiggle in here but you'll notice I kind of I'm blending slightly further down than like the original transition shade because I don't want to like blend over fully on that transition shade and then I'm just gonna slowly bring it forward again I'm not a makeup artist please don't come for me if you think I'm doing it wrong <laughs> um, not that you guys usually do, you're usually amazing, it might be some passes by or something, but uh, yeah, this is just what works for me. And then I usually find this eye is so much easier than this eye because it's a slightly different shape and I find the shape easier and I've usually, once I've done one eye, I've kind of like practiced, so I've got a down pat for the second eye, so yeah, I usually find this eye always looks slightly different, but that's okay. If you find that maybe it's not as blended as you like or any, something like that, but usually I do this step is I take my original blending brush, so I'm just going to take the Refer 27 and I go back into the original shape that we used, the very first one. And then I just lightly and very, very lightly, very soft touch, blend that hot, like a little bit over where I've laid the dark brown and where the initial transition shade is just to like re-blend it out. And then I just kind of, the further I go up and blend, the softer the touch. Just so that it can like marry together a little bit. I'm taking my intensify stick as I always say, you do not have to use this, it's up to you. But for me, this really is a game changer. If you find that yours is like tugging on your eyes, by the way, just rub a little bit on the back of your hand and it will warm up straight away for you. I actually have two all-time favorite uh, like metallic brushes or brushes that I use for metallics. They're called shader brushes, I guess. And the first one is the Refer 2. I have three of these as well and I love it. The natural hair, especially for like say Pat McGrath Labs shades or like Natasha Denoche, any metallic shade actually, it's just impeccable. The way that the natural hair picks up the metallic and disperses it, it's just the, the closest I've found to like what the shadow looks like in the pan on the eyes, if that kind of makes sense. And then the other one is actually the 773 from Delium Tools. And I know you guys see me use this a lot. And I this is a vegan one. And I actually find this does just as good a job as the Refer 2. And I just like that this one's slightly bigger. So depending on what I'm going for, um, usually for me, I just reach for one or the other. And then whatever one's not dirty, I just kind of use that one on the day. Um, but I love both of these equally. I think they're the best brushes for metallics. I'll use the Refer 2 today. And I'm actually going to dip into the Pat McGrath Labs Passion Fleur Quad again. And I'm going to dip into this shadow first, which is uh, Sienna Moonlight. Because when I used this the other day in my Pat review, I have a review of this in the cream blushes. Um, I'll link it down below for you guys. Um... I just wanted to bathe in this shadow all over the lid, if I'm honest. So that is what I am going to do. I like to tap and press my metallics on instead of just swiping because I find that that gets me the most opaqueness and the least amount of fallout. You can also wet, you, wet your brush, sorry, if you want like more intensity, but I've, or like, and also less fallout, I guess, but I just like to tap and press. I also like to kind of take my metallic up through the crease a little bit. You might like yours more structured and that's totally okay. Oh, I really like that shadow. I wanted to use this quad again because I feel like because it doesn't have any special shades or anything. I don't feel like, I feel like a lot of people are going to use this like once on their channel and then never use it again kind of thing. So I wanted to kind of show some more versatility with it. Oh, that's pretty. I do really, really like that shade. So pretty. I'm just going to take the other side of that Refer 2. And I'm actually dipping into Moonlit Seduction. Again, you can totally skip any of these steps or just go rogue and do whatever you like. I'm going to dip into this pink special shade from Moonlit Seduction. And I am just going to press and tap and like scatter this shade where we, over the top of that original one, just to add a little sparkle. I just want a little bit more va-boom. Now I'm going to pick up that Refer 14 again and dip uh, back into a teensy bit of the dark brown, not much. And this is where I just like tap the outer corner here to like marry the metallic and the matte together. Just so it's not like a harsh line or anything. It's kind of just like 
a gradient. And then I, when I say light touch, lightest touch, blend that just through the crease here to soften it a little bit. Let's go ahead and leave the eyes here for now and move on to our base makeup. I'm gonna take my KPD Locket Pore Smoothing Primer or Pore Refining Primer and I'm gonna take it on this Rare Beauty Foundation brush. This has become my favorite brush to apply like primer and stuff like that. It's just really soft and nice. I mean, it does apply foundation quite well too, but I don't like to apply foundation overly with uh, a brush to be honest, but this has really become a fave for primer. I just don't like to touch my face with my hands if I can avoid it because it freaks me out with like germs and stuff. I already have the most sensitive skin that will break out at the sight of anything and it already gets red. So if I touch it with my hands in any way, it just goes bright tomato red. So I like to use a brush. Up to you though, up to you. I've got like a rash and a reaction literally all over my entire face and chest from something and I cannot figure out for the life of me what it is because I haven't like been using anything different I don't think so I don't know what it is anyway fun times with my sensitive little Sally skin now we're gonna put on our color corrector I'm gonna use the Tarte colored clay CC corrector in light medium today and my favorite brush is the rare beauty concealer brush I really like the rare beauty concealer brushes I have three that's how much I like them <laughs> so I just like the shape of it it's just a really nice shape and the density is just I don't know it just blends out stuff really really beautifully and I like it especially for color corrector. I'm a little bit of a brush fiend, just so you know. I have more brushes than anyone could ever want or need. And I've always been like this. Even when I was a teenager, my mom used to always say like, you're just, you, you're just into makeup brushes. Like I've always been obsessed with them. And I know I need to sub try Sonia G and some others, but I'm just, I'm worried because I feel like once I start on them, I'm not going to stop in there. She, her brushes are expensive. <laughs> For my foundation, I'm going to take the new Laura Mercier Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Foundation. I have the shade 1 and 2. My favorite sponge is the Real Technique sponge. I don't love applying foundation with a brush. I just don't. Sometimes I go through the face, but it's always usually a sponge. I haven't used this foundation in a hot little minute. My skin's not really looking that crash hot today. It's not my all-time fave foundation, so I probably should have used something that I know I know and love, but I wanted to pull it out and play with it, so we'll see how it performs. Just, like, I don't know if you guys can see. I just have all this texture, and it's like, it's a rash. Like, I don't know what it's from. It's so bizarre. For concealer, I'm actually going to mix my Pat McGrath Labs in L4 with my Givenchy in N95 because the Givenchy just, I just need a little bit of extra coverage for today. Then the Givenchy on its own will provide. And you know, my all time favorite Holy Grail concealer brush is the BK Beauty 109 Mini Contour. This is by far my absolute favorite brush. Like, I think this might nearly be my just my favorite brush, period. I love it so much. I also have three of these. When I find a brush I like, I just order all of them. <laughs> and it's just, it's like the perfect shape to tap out concealer on the under eyes, but it's also like big enough that it taps it out quickly and not too slow. I just absolutely love it. And it's just so soft. It's the perfect density. I don't know what um, Lisa J did with this brush, but it is like literal perfection, truly. I also really like this for my contour and stuff as well. It's just such a good brush. I'm going to take the Milk Makeup Contour in, or Sculpt Stick, sorry, in Toasted. I also haven't used this in a little while, so I'm just going to draw it on. This is a true contour, so if you don't want a true contour, don't pick this up for sure. Get like the matte bronzer. And I'm going to use a different BK109 because this is the best brush for blending out contour as well. And I just like to tap and blend the contour in. I don't like to swipe 
too too much just kind of tap 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 and it will blend itself out this brush honestly though worth every single cent in my opinion <laughs> i just i absolutely adore it another brush that i feel like you could have and it will do like your entire face Let's go ahead and powder the face now. My favorite powder brush at the moment is this double-ended hourglass one. I think Hailey Bieber kind of, you know, made it famous or something, but I got it and I freaking love it for like powder because I use this side for my under eye and this side for my face and it's brilliant. So I'm gonna take the new MAC pink powder. This is the Studio Fix Blur Powder thingy and I'm going to set my under eyes. I just concentrate this powder on my under eyes only though. And my T-zone, I should say. For the rest of my face, I'm actually going to take my Christian Louboutin powder. This is in 10N Ivory Nude. I just, honestly, I got this purely for the packaging. I really did. And I don't care what that says about me. <laughs> and I'm just going to take the other side of the hourglass brush and tap that over the face. I haven't needed as much powder to set my face lately. I definitely think this brush is worth it, honestly. The double end, like this side for the under eyes and this side for this, it's really, really a, a really great brush. I really do. I really love this brush. I haven't not used it pretty much since I got it. I'm just gonna quickly go off camera and do my brows cause it's boring and nothing has changed about them. And then we will come back and do the rest of the face. Brows are done. Let's actually finish the lower lash line and the eyes before we move on to the rest of the face, shall we? My favorite brush for the under eye, you see me use this pretty much every video, is the Delium Tools 777 Shader Brush. It's just a really good fluffy pointed under eye brush. I'm yeah, I just love it. So we're gonna dip into this one right here. It doesn't disperse the product too far down underneath my eyes and then it has enough fluff that it, as I apply it, it just blends it. I also love the Refa 3, which is like a very, very small pencil brush. And I'm just gonna dip into the dark brown matte. And I like that because, or this brush, sorry, because it does a concentrated application of the color for my lower lash line. For the inner corner, I like to use a brush that's like kind of domed. So the, like for example, the BK207. See how it's like a little stubby kind of brush? I personally like to use those for the inner corner. I'm gonna take the pink from Passion Fleur. So this is Skin Show Pink Dawn. I really like this pink, it's such a gorgeous shade. I'm gonna tap that into the inner corner first and then I am going to like swoop it up a bit just to add a little extra pop of color for my lower waterline I'm actually going to take this new Surratt eye brightener pencil that they sent me in PR I'm just going to pop this in the lower waterline it's just like a like a nude eyeliner designed to like brighten up I also use this a little bit underneath my brows as well if you're wondering and then i'm just going to take the black satin kajal liner from victoria and i actually have this new mascara from surat as well that they sent me so i figured we would try this it's like a smaller little brush actually why aren't you focusing there we go it's like a smaller little brush which is kind of cool so we'll see how this goes So that's the mascara. I actually think that looks really nice. Hmm. I'll keep testing it and I'll report back. We're going to do bronzer now. I have two favorite bronzer brushes and it just depends on my mood on the day, to be honest with you. The first one is the Angie Hot and Flashy Cross BK Beauty A507 Angled Brush. I don't know what it is about this, but just the shape of it is like just it's perfect for bronzer and it's like nice and dense and it just applies bronzer incredibly i love it and then sometimes i like to use the refer 22 which is like a bigger kind of fluffier brush but it also has like a tapered bit here so that you can kind of like tap it in so it's it doesn't just like put the product everywhere it like strategically still places it so 
just depends on my mood on the day. Let's actually use the Refer 22. Oh, this is the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Show Skin Fetish Divine Bronzer in Nude Honey. It is one of my faves. I absolutely adore it. And I like to tap. I don't like to kind of swipe or anything because I've already put product on underneath. So I don't want to like swipe it off or anything. So I just tap it where I want it. And then let's actually take the angled one for the other side. I just think it hugs the shape of my face really well, this brush actually. So they are my two favorite bronzer brushes. I love them. And no, I can't live without them. Dramatic, but it is what it is. For highlighter, I'm gonna take the Lisa Aldridge Liquid Highlighter in Pink Moon. And if you didn't know, you can get Lisa Aldridge off Selfridges now. It's very exciting, very exciting. I'm gonna take my sponge. I like to apply this with my sponge, not a brush. And I just work it in like this and then tap it where I want it. Oh, look at that perfection. Oh, I love that. I know the kids aren't using highlighter, but I don't care. You'll pry it from a cold dead hands. And then I like to set like my cream products with powder. So I'm gonna take the pink highlighter from the Pillow Talk Face Palette from Charlotte Tilbury. And actually one of my favorite uh, highlighter brushes is just this little flower beauty brush and it's because it's really soft and like bendable and flexy and it's just tapered and it disperses the product really well and I think it was like four dollars from like a four Australian dollars from chemist warehouse or something or wherever you get flower beauty and I like it Normally I would also put cream blush on, but I want to show you the shade of this blush on its own without anything underneath it. So this is one of the new, new Dior Backstage blushes. This is the shade Rosewood. It is very pretty. I love the new shades that they brought out, but I had, I was, as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh yeah. Now my favorite blush brush. This is one of the best, no, this is the best brush I've ever tried ever, especially for blush hands down. I have two of them, no, I have three of them now, I think. This is the Buildable Cheek Brush from Smashbox and I can't recommend it enough. The shape of it, it like hugs your cheek and then the way that the bristles are dispersed and like how soft they are, it just applies blush like nothing I've ever used. It is impeccable. This is the best, in my opinion, blush brush around, period. Period. I just tap it to where I want it. And it just like airbrushes the blush on this brush. It is like, honestly, if there's something that I recommend the most, it's this. It really is. It's just a game changer for me. And also I really like this blush. Look at that shade. Isn't that just such a natural kind of nudey flush? Adore. Adore. With Lisa Eldridge launching at Selfridges, I have like a yearly subscription for their shipping service. Uh, I picked up the... Um, new Lisa Aldridge Skin and Makeup Enhancing Mist when she dropped because I wanted this when she first launched it, but the shipping on her website is crazy for Australia. So I'm just going to spray this on my sponge directly. It has a nice mister actually. I've only used it a couple of times, so my kind of thoughts haven't fully formed on this one, but it is nice so far. It is a little bit dangerous with Lisa being on um, Selfridges at the same time though, because I just want to like pick up a new lipstick or like lip liner or lip gloss every bloody time I go into Selfridges now. <laughs> For lips, I did get sent these three, uh, what are these called? Like lips, lip sleeks from Surratt. So let me swatch them. So these are the three shades that they sent me. So we have Fissoir, Heaven and Rubis. I mean, they look very pretty. Oh, I like these two most. Hmm, I don't mind them. They look they look quite lovely. I'm actually going to take the Rare Beauty Lip Liner in Lively because I find this is pretty much the same color as my lips. And then I'm going to take a little bit of Heaven and tap it onto like the outer corners. And then I'm going to take Fissoir and put that in the center. Oh, I really like that. It looks really nice. Hmm. 
okay. And then I'm also going to put this new Lisa Aldridge lip gloss that I got over the top. This is Dancing Rose and this has become my favorite lip gloss. I'm not even kidding. I actually went on to buy more shades of this lip gloss and they're all sold out on Selfridges. So I was devastated, but this is amazing, this lip gloss. Look how impeccable that lip gloss is though. Mm, I love it so much. The formula, it's like a lip oil, but not. It's like a proper lip gloss, but it has the hydration and feel of like a lip oil and it's not sticky in any way. I don't know, it's just impeccable. Anyway, let me go figure out, you know, hair jewelry, all that jazz, and we'll zoom out and see the finished look. Alrighty, this is the finished makeup look. What do you guys think? I really like how this came together. I think it's looking pretty good, especially because my skin is really going through it at the moment, the poor little thing. Anyway, um, what do you guys think? So they were some of my current absolute holy grail favorite makeup brushes. I hope that was helpful in some way, shape or form. And I hope you just had a good old fashioned makeup time with me. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you are watching till this point, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so, so much. I truly appreciate it. And I hope you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next time. Bye.